Hello to all you beautiful people out there, Ragnella over here bringing you the next episode of Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. In today's episode, we are taking on the last of three quests that can really kiss my ass. And the monster we're facing off against today is the Agnactor. In terms of equipment, I am bringing along the same stuff as I did with the Diablos. And the only thing I forgot to mention is that last time I had upgraded my Rathian armor set uh, pretty much to max at this point where it can go. I need a hard armor spheres in order to upgrade it any further, but with what I have right now, it, it will be good enough. Uh, according to the wiki, the Agnactor is weak to ice as well as water. I did not have a strong enough water-based weapon, so I guess ice is going to have to do. I just hope that the wiki is right. And my drink skills include uh, just a bunch of this crap. <laughs> just, there's... There's nothing that uh, is really good here, except for the attack up small, which is just a small attack boost. And you've seen this before, the detect uh, health plus 50, divine blessing, and attack plus uh, fire attack plus one, which is going to be useless since I don't have a fire based weapon on hand. Okay, let's get started on this nonsense. All right, where is he? Okay, there, Leviathan in the fire. And this is in the volcano, so your memo, bring your cool drinks, it's gonna be hotter than hell. I'm also bringing sonic bombs with me on this quest, because like in Diablos, the Agnactor can be pretty vulnerable to loud sounds. So, there we go with that. But, uh, let's see, I'm just gonna pop one of these right now. Alright, we're gonna be going into Area 7 here, so, yeah right where I remember him being. The Agnactor is a Generation 3 monster, and uh, he's he's actually quite annoying. He's not I wouldn't quite say on the level of Tigrex or the Diablos, but he's still pretty up there. And it's because of a gimmick slash, actually kind of a, a neat little feature with this monster, is that it has a armor on its body that softens whenever he is underground and if uh, he's above ground long enough then that armor is going to harden into something that you cannot break you will uh or well you can break it but you're going to constantly bounce off of it so unless you had a skill that negates uh your weapons from bouncing you are going to be bouncing against this monster constantly. See, there we go. It's magma armor hardens when he's out of the ground. And ugh, it's going to be nasty. This is going to be a rough fight. Okay. Here we go. Going to hit him with a paintball first. And there's your clues. Loud sounds will knock one of these monsters out of the ground. But thankfully, when the Agnactor touches any form of lava, or if he just goes underground, then his body will soften, and that will allow you to better attack that uh, part of the body. Be careful of this monster's fire beam. It is a nasty move, and he has several variations of said fire beam. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna attempt to go nuts against this monster. Whenever that armor softens, oh, I'm gonna be so there. Oh God. Let's see. There we go. And much like the Diablos, once this monster goes into rage mode, Sonic bombs will not work. So don't even bother trying. I'm primarily aiming for the chest that is his technical weak point, but if you could uh, break off that armor plating, you'll get even more blows that uh, you can uh, hit the monster with. Oh, oh boy. I think he might be in rage mode. Yes, he is. And because he's a Leviathan-based monster, he has a lot of similarities to monsters like Legaikris and uh, Royal Ludroff, which, if I recall correctly, I, uh, I don't remember if uh, the Legaikris is going to be in this game. 
Uh, I'll need to double check. I really hope that the the Gygris would be in here. It's been a while since I've done like a full monster breakdown <laughs> of this game. Uh, okay, come on. What I want this monster to do is do his... Oh, okay, there's his fire beam. It is to do his like little circular fire beam. That way, his body will be completely exposed to good attacks and let's see uh, and I could get close enough for a lot of attacks oh here we go this is what I was hoping for wait I think oh yep there it is you're gonna want to be close to the ignactor whenever that happens otherwise you risk getting hit by a very large fire beam I don't know if it still applies to this game, but I know it applied to uh, other Monster Hunter games where Agnactor appeared in. But uh, the most bullshit part of the, about this monster was if you wanted a claw, then y you had to break every single claw portion of his body, which gets me into his breakable parts. You can break pretty much anything that has the armor on it. So that's his back, that's all four claws, that's his beak, his chest, as well as his tail. Which, by the way, you have to break his tail first before you can actually cut it off. Okay. And when he falls down... Okay. Whenever he falls down like that, there is an earthquake effect, which... Uh, oh, wow, he's exhausted already. So you gotta be careful whenever he comes out of the ground, otherwise you could be subject to an earthquake. get my sonic bombs at the ready here just in case he decides he wants to go back underground thankfully breaking parts off his body really makes this monster flinch I wanted to go back underground so I could stun him oh and he's going where is he going though he can go into several areas but he will stay in the actual volcanic area. He won't go into the uh, areas 1 through 4. Okay, he's going to area 5. That's fine. He will feed on Renopolis, and looks like he already has a victim. And he's dropping a shiny. Oh, I want that shiny. But uh, I also want to kill him. So just got to focus on the chest. Make sure... Oh, his uh, his back is now broken, so that's good. Oh, and something else broke. I think another claw broke. Great. Thankfully, once the, uh, the body part that has the armor is broken, then uh, you are free to hit that part as many times as you want. Oh, God damn it. Okay. I have no idea where he's at in terms of health. Uh, but I think he is starting to get a bit low. Usually he'll go into area 3 first before going into area 10 where he rests. So this is a good opportunity to finish him off. Area 10 is nice because it's a small place to fight in, but at the same time, that's also its downfall. Because there's not a whole lot of room to dodge attacks. Oh God. Careful of fire blight with this monster. Probably noticing every time the uh, he's about to do his little uh, little fire spin move, uh, the ground will shake. So that will be your cue. Look around, make sure that uh, you find out where he's going to pop out from. And when that happens, then you can go in and get those uh, extra hits off on him. All right, that fight went much more smoothly than I expected. So that is super good. And it saves me a lot of time. 
So, wow, yeah, <laughs> the last three monsters are monsters that really give me a headache. But when things go right, they, they go pretty right. And now these, these other felines, they're quite angry at me. All right, so uh, <laughs> make sure that when you're attacking this monster, only go after the stuff that uh, you can actually hit. So the, anything that's glowing, eh, basically the glowing parts on this monster are giant fuck you lights. So hit those, break them off, and then continue whacking in, uh, in case other parts of them harden. Well, that's going to do it for me and this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in any of my other content, be sure to mash on one of those annotations. They'll be featured at the end of this video, and I will see you all again next time. Take care, people.